Welcome back. We're talking about the multivariate Gaussian, and we were just looking at the affine property of a Gaussian, or multivariate Gaussian, oftentimes we just say a Gaussian, or, and we were using that affine property to construct Gaussian random variables and the sphering property to convert them back to standard normals. And I was saying here, so I have to, I have to make a correction. I, I made an error when I was talking about the sphering uh, operation, I said that C, if C is positive semi-definite, then we have this. But if it's just positive semi-definite, then its determinant could be zero. And if the determinant of C is zero, then the determinant of A is also going to be zero by, you know, you can check that using your linear algebra. The determinant of the product is the product of the determinants. And then A would not be invertible. So here, I should have said, so I'll just correct, if C is positive definite, pos def, sometimes we say, and that means, if you know your linear algebra, that means that the eigenvalues are strictly positive. That's what positive definite means. If you, if you don't know what eigenvalues are, then in this video we're actually going to get some intuition for in this case, what these what the eigenvalues mean. So this is going to be a neat. This is going to be neat. We're going to use this this constructing this um, this method of construction to actually see what the eigenvalues are. This is this is going to be this is going to be cool. If you but you know this is not a replacement for a good abstract understanding of what the definition of an eigenvalue and an eigenvector is. Okay, so here we go. So here, this is going to be this is going to be some cool, some cool geometric intuition. This is neat. All right, so let X be a Gaussian, a, a standard normal. We call we call this a standard normal, multivariate normal. And let C be a covariance matrix. Sorry, cove for covariance matrix. And and let's let let that mu. Mu is mu is just some. So x is going to be an R n, and so mu is just a vector in R n. C C is a cover, an n by n covariance matrix. All right, and so. A covariance matrix, we, we said earlier, that a covariance matrix is always symmetric and it's always positive semi-definite. So we're going to use a little bit of linear algebra here. We're going we're gonna to play around with C. We're going to do a little bit of linear algebra and then we're going to see how that shows us some, some nice intuitive geometry. So uh, any symmetric, let me use different, any symmetric matrix, since C is symmetric, we can diagonalize it. So we can diagonalize C into U lambda U transpose, where, let me put that, uh, so U here is the matrix of eigenvectors, unit eigenvectors, and it's orthogonal. And lambda is the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues for C. These are the eigenvectors and these are the eigenvalues. Eigvex and eigvals. And actually let me, so since a covariance matrix is positive semi-definite, then all the eigenvalues are non-negative. So let's, let's actually for reasons that will become clear, and no, no, actually, let, let's leave it the way it is. That, that's fine. So, so these are the eigenvalues, and they're all they're all uh, greater or equal to zero. Okay, and now since these are all greater or equal to zero, we can factor this matrix as into its square roots. So that's just take the square root of each of these. So, and if this remember this is zero on the off diagonal. Just take the square root of each of these entries, um, make a new diagonal matrix, and that's lambda square root. 
since this is a symmetric matrix, then it's equal to its transpose. So we can write this as u lambda to the one half times u lambda to the one half transpose. Transpose of the product is the product of is the reversed product of the transposes. So we have that. And let's call this, let's give these a name. Let's call these A. Let's call this this is A and this is this is also A, of course. And now remember that well we having C in this factored form was the property that we needed. Or the, the the what we needed in order to apply these of course it, it always factors in this way but we needed to get our hands on on that a in order to apply this this construction this uh, construction property here so we have that and so now if we let y if we let y equal a x plus mu then y is normally distributed with mean mu and variance and variance c oh wait x right yeah right because x is right x is um this guy right and so by the construction property a x plus mu is normally distributed in this way where c is a a transpose Covariance matrix C. So that's nice. But now where's where's the ge where's the geometry? What's why did I call this geometric intuition? Well, here's here here it comes. So uh, so let's let's draw some pictures. Let's draw. I'm gonna draw. Four pictures. The first one will be this original X. So X, make that yellow. X is normally distributed with mean zero and covariance matrix I. So what does that look like if we drew? Let's just draw the level sets of this thing. And let's try to draw in maybe we'll try to draw in three dimensions. Try to be try to be clever here. The level sets of the density of this guy, this guy's density, are these spheres. Centered at the origin. They're centered at the origin because the mean is zero, right? That's that's the mean right there. And this is what these level sets look like. Sets of these are the sets of constant density. Spherical. Okay, now let's apply the first step in this process. So we could we could make this, we could first we could so this this part here, so we could rewrite this as let me put it up here. A was remember A was this thing. So this is U lambda to the one half times x plus mu. So the first step is to multiply by lambda to the one half. So let's do that. Lambda to the one half times x. Well if we apply this property, remember x is this, if we apply the affine property, we multiply it now now a here is lambda to the one half and uh, the mean well b is zero. So this is this stays zero because our original mean was zero, and then we get lambda to the one half times i times lambda to the one half transpose. Lambda to the one half transpose is lambda to the one half. So this is just lambda. So this is normal mean zero covariance lambda. And what does this look like? Well, let's say that um, let's say since we're so let's let's look at the first maybe this is the first dimension here. 
This is, so this would be like the x1 dimension. This is x2. And if let's suppose that lambda one is like is like uh, let's say it's like 25, and lambda two I'm going to make them squares so that when I take the square root, then everything looks nice. And let's say that lambda two is 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 one. Then, or maybe maybe make it a little bit bigger. Let's make it like let's make it four. Then at least for these two dimensions, if I draw the level sets, here's what's going to happen. The level sets are going to be oblong, going to be these ellipses shaped like this. Oops, that one got a little out of shape there. Test my drawing skills here. So they're going to be these ellipses, and of course there will be another since I'm trying to make this look three-dimensional, then we would have the others as well. But the important thing here is that the square root, the square root of lambda one, and the square root of lambda two, are going to they're going to scale. They're, they're going to tell you how what the shape of these ellipses are. So this axis along the x1 axis, the ellipse, the shape of the ellipse will be stretched by an amount that's like square root, it goes like square root of lambda 1 in the x1 direction, and it's going to be stretched in this direction, or squeezed, maybe it could be squeezed, by uh, square root of lambda 2. Right, because this, you know, if you have some intuition for what the covariance matrix look like, or what the, you know, in, in if you just look at the x1 dimension, for example, the 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 variance, it's the variance for this the x1 coordinate, and so the variance of the x1 coordinate is like the square root, right? This is this this was lambda here, this is the, so this is the covariance matrix, and lambda one is the variance of x1. It's the variance of the x1 coordinate. I didn't, we didn't say that yet, but I, I guess I'm going to say that in a little bit. It turns out that lambda 1 is actually the variance of the x1 coordinate. And so its square root is its standard deviation, or the square root of lambda 1 is the standard deviation of x1. And that's why I put the square root here, so that it, it sort of scaled correctly with the shape of this ellipse. Okay, so this this shows you. I mean, geometrically, this is what this is what these eigenvalues are doing. And now we're ready for you. I'm going to run out of time. I think here, maybe we'll see. So if we multiply by you now, then we get again we apply we apply the property, the affine property, and we get u lambda u transpose. And u lambda u transpose is just c, right? So this guy, after we multiply by u, it's normally distributed with mean 0 and covariance c. And what does this look like? Well, this, so u here, if you know what an orthogonal matrix is, an orthogonal matrix, or if you don't, I'm going to tell you what it does. An orthogonal matrix is a reflection or rotation and or rotation so it's going to take this thing and it's going to either you know it could reflect it but it turns out that's not going to matter but the important thing is it's going to rotate it so it's going to rotate it it's going to make it maybe I'll make it like this it's still going to be centered at the origin ah It's supposed to be just the same, but rotated. Okay, we're not going to finish this. I'm going to run out of time here, so let me uh, stop there, and we'll we'll continue uh, with this this intuition.